If you landed from outer space, chances are you'd end up in a paddy field. Sounds surprising, but not when you realize rice helps feed almost half the planet and that almost a billion households in Asia, Africa and the Americas depend on rice growing for their livelihood. Hands on wades through the paddies to see how rice systems and rice products are leading the fight against world hunger and poverty. <laughs> Nepal, a landlocked kingdom of mountains and temples where rice is the most important staple crop. Chitwan Valley, at the foot of the Himalayas, is the nation's rice bowl. In the 1990s, farmers noticed the native rice strains were losing their potency, lower yields and more susceptible to pests and diseases. To forestall a potential disaster, the UK Department for International Development funded a scheme to safeguard rice production. Hundreds of farmers were involved in developing a new, hardier strain, and many are now experimenting on their own. Agronomists from a local non-governmental organization, Lie Bird and the Center for Arid Zone Studies, surveyed 648 farmers to assess individual needs for rice seed. Farmers have created hybrids for thousands of years, but now they can search the world for rice with specific characteristics to match local needs. We try to understand what their you know, priorities are, what their problems are, and what type of rice varieties they want to grow. Uh, based on that, then we started looking into, uh, the, in, into different rice gene pools. Gene banks in Nepal, India and the Philippines offer a choice of over 10,000 traditional varieties of rice. Just 24 were selected for the Nepalese farmers to try out. The goal was to find two parent types to create a brand new variety, ideal for Nepalese conditions. What people wanted was to have rice in their own fields, which is best suited for our climate and our soil. That's why this project is so important. The farmers recorded data on maturity rates, disease resistance and yields. Appearance and taste were also checked to make sure the rice would sell. Masuri colored rice is a high price in the market. The harvested rice was then collected from the farmers and their feedback evaluated. Two varieties, one from Nepal and one from the Philippines, emerged as ideal parents for the new seed stock. After cross-breeding at Iris Labs in the Philippines, a new variety was born, named Judy 572. The new rice passed the agronomists' tests, but how did it go down with farmers and their customers? Yeah. The taste and aroma are a hit here too. Inspired by the project, many farmers have started experimenting with their own varieties. I chose to breed a cross between Kalinga 3 and IR64, and although these were not selected by the project at that time, I decided to do an experiment under my own initiative, and I introduced the seed myself and named it Devraj, my name. Encouraged, Devraj is now trying to create another breed. Success breeds success, and not just for Devraj. Thanks to this project, there are now over 80 new high-yield rice strains being grown in Nepal's Chitwan Valley. With the old variety I was planting, I was only getting a yield of 10 to 12 quintals. But with the new variety called Swana, I am getting 20 to 22 quintals. That's almost 100% higher yield. The seeds we used in the past were old and mostly infected with disease, but what we have now are resistant to pests, and that's why we have a higher rice production. The rice industry is seldom associated with Europe, but rice is grown in Europe's southern countries and is a staple food from Stockholm to Sofia. Not far from Cologne in Germany, a small factory transforms rice grains into a popular and healthy drink, while a Belgian factory pops them into cakes. Rice drinks are gaining popularity as alternatives to dairy milk, boosted by their no-fat and allergy-free qualities.
A lot of people have too high cholesterol levels and uh, Rice Dream is a cholesterol-free product. So how do you turn a grain into a drink? This organic rice is milled and cooked. Fermenting produces natural sugars for a sweet taste. Sunflower oil makes the drink cloudy, just like cow's milk. Rice milk won't put cows out of business, but demand is rising for healthy alternatives. In the last five years, there has been a much stronger demand amongst young people. And not trans, many young people. Well, it's healthy for the family and it's known to be a quality product. Rice milk is refreshing and it's got a better taste than soya milk. There's more proof that rice is big in Europe. Another rice product, another European factory, this one's in Belgium. Here, the rice grains are puffed like popcorn pressed into rice cakes and marketed as a healthy snack. As well as being free from lactose, rice also has no gluten, which in other grains can provoke allergic reactions. Rice is in fact gluten-free and therefore um, it enables us to uh, give people uh, good quality foods uh, they can use uh, at breakfast but also as a snack. The puffed rice grains mean these snacks are light and popular with dieters. The puffing machines allow at high pressure and heat to unlock the starch so that the rice cake is formed almost every seven seconds. The cakes can be given a sweet or savoury topping before being packed and sent to market. The growing popularity of rice-based foods and drinks in Europe shows that this cereal still has vast potential as a money spinner. Rice is already the staple food for almost half the world's inhabitants, and with world population increasing by the size of Germany every year, the pressure to produce new, ever more productive and disease-resistant varieties will grow. IRI, the International Rice Research Institute, was set up in the Philippines to do just this. And as one of the consultative group on international agricultural research, CGIAR centers, its germplasm bank houses a staggering 10,000 traditional varieties of rice, which are available for cross-breeding into new strains. Now, digital technology means that farmers the world over can have global rice expertise at their fingertips. As well as being the world's rice germ plasm bank, it's the biggest center of knowledge for everything to do with rice. But these days, the library is quiet. IRI has begun putting this information into digital form with a new system called the Knowledge Bank, and they've made it as accessible as possible. Step forward, the rice doctor. You're going to the doctor. The doctor will ask you uh, where, where the symptoms occur, uh, when it occurs, and uh, what is the extent of the damage, and perhaps he will select among these indicators the possible cause of the disease or the uh, illness of the plant. There are programs giving advice for each stage of the growing cycle. For a successful rice production, meaning increasing yield, farmers has to undergo several decision-making process or processes to enable him to make the right decisions at the right time. By replicating situations farmers are likely to encounter, they can work on solutions to their problems. The other major problem that we, we also have on this, this farm here is with snails. And you'll see here, this is a pretty good indication, these lines were all full lines. And now you can see the gaps. Um, and, and snails are a problem because they like water. Also, the reason we have water in the fields are to try and stop our weeds, so it's a trade-off. But IRI is best known for developing new varieties of seed for more efficient crop production, even under difficult conditions. These uh, trials here are looking at trying to select varieties which have a better drought tolerance. So basically we're looking for a variety that actually uses less water but still can yield um, under a droughted situation. 
there's hard science research too. Investigators can work at the molecular level. It's now much quicker to analyze and choose a huge variety of properties from drought resistance to nutritional quality. Here in Los Banos, an hour's drive from Manila, Iri can pass that knowledge direct to farmers. Most of the technologies that we introduce are, uh, I would say, uh, there are some which are really location specific. So in the case of our experiment at Iri, so these are the real needs uh, in the field. So that's uh, what uh, our project is usually targeting at. Definitely it would help the farmer to solve their problem. Eugenio Castro is meeting a local rice grower who will be collaborating on trials of new seed types and growing techniques. But this farmer has had great results in cutting out one of the most expensive and overused inputs, pesticides. This means the natural predators of pests like these spiders can get on with the job of eating the rice pests. After uh, more than 32 years growing commercial rice, without having to bother to use any drop, a single drop of insecticide on our crops. We did not uh, observe any loss like 2%. Uh, uh, never did we have uh, serious infestation. Farmers here are unusual in having direct access to Iri's huge resources. But the Knowledge Bank's individual country sites give tailor-made information and advice for farmers across the world. Although access is free, most farmers working dawn till dusk can't afford the time to learn to use this system. And even if they could, few rural areas have the luxury of the internet. The program is aimed at extension workers who take master classes in new techniques and bring the knowledge back to farmers in their own countries. Rice is usually associated with Asia, but it's been grown in Africa for over 3,000 years. Although rice provides food for millions throughout the continent, Africa cannot produce all it needs. Rice imports cost 1 billion US dollars a year. The challenge was to create a new strain of rice that could stand the rigors of the African climate and reduce the dependency. Experiments were carried out in laboratories of the West Africa Rice Development Association, known as WADA, near the town of Buwaki in central Ivory Coast. It's been under the control of rebel forces since the 2002 civil war. Nerika is a cross between the African glaberima rice and the Asian type of rice. Nerika rice is an output of many years of uh, research. So what our scientists decided to do was to see how they can combine the robustness of the African rice with the high yield traits that are coming from Asia. They came up with Nerica, a new rice for Africa. After years of trial and error, the African-Asian fusion became reality. And from the master Nerica, many varieties have been bred to suit all kinds of regions and climates. Samples of each are selected, labeled, dated and stored in this refrigerated gene bank. They're available to farmers worldwide and seeds have been sent to both the US and Germany. The gene bank can hold 20,000 rice varieties for up to five years. It can stay for up to five years without them dying because we have set the temperature to about 10 degrees centigrade and relative humidity to about 40. When the recent conflict reached the doorstep of the gene bank, scientists decided to guard against future attacks and two identical stores were set up in the US and Philippines. The different strains of Nerica rice from Warder are distributed to farmers across the country. Each seed is selected to meet local conditions. This women's group are now the country's most successful dryland rice farmers. They've been planting Nerica rice in their fields for two years. Initially, when I was using our usual rice, I was only earning about 10,000 Central African francs. The first year, we planted Nerica rice. I was earning 80,000 francs, but this year I'm sure I can earn about 100,000 francs with Nerica. So what exactly are the key benefits of Nerica? The 
pluses don't stop there. In Africa, pounding rice is traditionally women's work. So with its softer husk, Nerica rice is a winner. Yeah, the difference. <coughs> with our local strains of rice, you have to mill it three times, whereas with Narica rice, you only have to mill it twice. Last but not least is its taste and texture. Sticky or dry, there's always a Narica. It's like our treasure. It's a collection of all that we have. And all that we have doesn't belong to us today. It belongs to the children that are coming behind us and generations thereafter. Bangladesh is self-sufficient in rice, growing 38 million tons a year. Rice husk is a byproduct and can be compacted into briquettes to replace firewood as a cleaner, more efficient cooking fuel. But there's still room for improvement in the cleaner, more efficient briquette industry. Before being dehusked, the rice is heated in furnaces powered by burning dried rice husk. This is often an inefficient and smoky process. Step forward the Bangladesh Rice Research Institute. The main objective of this project funded by DFID is to improve the efficiency of the furnaces. The efficiency of this boiler is very low, 15 to 20 percent. Improving the efficiency of the furnaces means more leftover husks for briquettes. At the Bangladesh Rice Research Institute, they developed a prototype of an energy-saving furnace for installation in a working mill. One of the main refinements was insulating the furnace to stop heat loss. I can easily stand here because there is no heat loss by radiation because there is a proper insulation. Pressure gauge and safety valve were also added to prevent the boiler from exploding and causing serious injury. Because there is a safety valve, there is no possibility of the pressure to get up in the boiler. But the process of producing briquette fuel from the remaining rice husk could also be improved. This screw, the key component of the briquetting machine, wears out after just eight hours. Once again, the institute stepped in. They found by changing the metal from steel to tungsten, the life of the screw was doubled. Tungsten carbide uh, is more hard, and uh, this screw lasts for 16 hours. In Bangladesh, little is wasted. Apart from using rice husk as fuel, Bangladeshis utilize byproducts of rice for chicken litter, feeding fish, and eat to clean their teeth. The research institute is now working on a way to use the rice husk ash to make cement. The city market of Nueva Ecija and the Philippines and the rice stalls are open for business. With nearly three million hectares of paddy fields, new ways are being found to profit from the industry's waste products. It's 7 a.m. and personnel officer Faye Frielde is on her way to work, but she doesn't just have a day job. For 18 years, she's led a double life. This is my workshop. We made the paper out of rice and other indigenous materials. Faye's workshop is near her home and she employs eight other part -timers. The process is very easy, only it's labor intensive and you have to uh, more patience to develop your skill. The rice straw, the leafy part of rice left after the grains have been taken out, is usually seen as worthless waste. But Faye has perfected a process to turn it into something a lot more valuable. I come to experiment with that fibers because some buyers ask me to make different textures of paper. The picture frames, CD case, magazine bags, wine bag. There are endless creative possibilities for phase paper products.
Fay started her business in 1986 with a government loan as part of a program to encourage alternative uses for rice. Things took off in 1992 when she started getting orders by the container load. But during 1997, we, we, we don't engage anymore in the export because of the global crisis. All the orders are cancelled. So we have to stop exporting. Right now, orders are increasing and the business is building up again. She's even been invited to Kuwait for a year to teach how she does it. And when she gets back, she's decided to leave her safe job and go it alone. The Philippine government is keen to find new ways for people to boost their incomes from rice. At Phil Rice, what we do is to develop rice-based products and then once we have standardized or developed the, these products, we trained several groups of women and private individuals to venture on making rice-based products as their source of income. Here at Phil Rice, they've taken ancient tribal practices of rice fermentation and adapted them for the modern market. The method is straightforward. Boiled rice is mixed with yeast and stored at room temperature for two or three days. The wine is now about 10% alcohol. It's drained and pasteurized and left to age for one month. The flavor is now fully developed and the alcohol content has increased to about 14%. A final filtration through activated charcoal removes impurities and the rice wine is ready for sale. Under these laboratory conditions, they believe they've produced the perfect cup. Rice wine looks like being a hit in the Philippine market. Other brands are already on sale and big private manufacturers are looking at large-scale production. But Phil Rice is working to make sure licensing will also give family-sized operations a chance to make some extra cash from their crops. Amongst Phil Rice's display of alternative rice products is another potential hit, rice coffee. Last year, Letty Basubas turned her backyard into a rice coffee factory. When I was small, my grandmother gave me rice coffee when I wasn't feeling well. She gave me rice coffee as a sort of therapeutic drink, and it was good. It tastes similar to coffee but contains no caffeine and is said to have health benefits. And it's proving to be very popular. With very little marketing, Letty is now selling her coffee in 20 local shops and supermarkets and employing 10 part-time staff. It's giving a real boost to her income from farming. All over Asia, rice farmers face an increasingly competitive market. But with relatively simple methods and a dash of entrepreneurial flair, it's possible to create extra wealth and new jobs from this ubiquitous staple crop. The challenge now is for others to follow suit.